Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We will call this work order to session. Thank you for being here. Public comments. Um, clerk, I believe we have one person to sign up this morning. Should I say one citizen? Uh, Mr. Larry Pierce. Uh, Mr. Pierce, before you come forward, the Board of Commissioners welcome our citizens' comment. It is my goal to make these meetings run smoothly and efficiently in order for the government to be effective. In this vein, I ask everyone to follow the rules of the body as directed by the chair. I also ask that everyone please assist me in keeping order in this room um, during this deliberative process so that our citizens' uh, time, including those watching on TV, and our time is not fruitless. Uh, we have, Mr. Pierce, you have three minutes. Uh, we have a three-minute rule, so if you could please state your name and your address, and and you will we'll have the, we'll place the timer so you can we'll turn it on. So when you hear the buzzer, if you could for me, just wrap up your sentence, okay? Thank you and good well, morning. I, I am learning as I live. Ah. Oh. Larry Pierce, okay. forty-one twenty Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners, and fellow citizens of which I am one of. Now, there was something I learned a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Way back in high school, we were studying literature, and Sir Walter Scott, somewhere around 200 years ago, said, Oh, what webs we weave when we first practice to deceive. Now, you know, I only have three minutes, but I'm gonna try to push it through. <clears throat> Two years ago, we started out with uh, an opinion from the coroner that she needed $60,000 and her deputies to get $20,000, $22,000 a year to do her office. Well, she was turned down on that and it was tabled. And it still remains <coughs> under the table. But, as much as I try to bring you information, and one day I probably won't have any information to bring you. But, as such, <coughs> I think one of the commissioners said, it's not our job to tell another elected official how to run their office. Well, that would be good if she ran her office. Now, her office is down the road, and y'all don't know how many days she's there and she's not there. Well, I have a pretty good approximation. For instance, the last report I got last week for the amount of investigation deaths by her department was 318, of which 10%. She doesn't have the pronouncement. Pronouncement, now what is that? Pronouncement is where you are attending and you are on site of the person who deceased and you sign the verification that they have passed that pronouncement. <clears throat> and it's done by the coroner or deputy coroner. Now, 318 <coughs> times 175, <coughs> figure it out, it's a lot of money. Somewhere around 75,000 or something like that. Had she gone on any of them, there's not a charge of the county. So, that's one thought. The other thought is this. Her office manager, Larry Bussey, and, and this is really hilarious. Larry Bussey took a trip to Egypt. He went to the beach and over somewhere, and then he went to Egypt. Mr. And there Pierce. was a famous person Mr. named Pierce. Clyde the Campbell. Mr. Pierce, you've yes, exceeded your three minutes. I'm going to give you one more second to wrap it up. All right. Clyde the Camel. He's riding Clyde the Camel, and he got paid for it. Part-time employees are not entitled to the recruitment of money to be paid for vacation. So whose job is it? I don't know whose job it is. 
it's my job, it's one of you guys' job, because we're the citizens. And I'll tell you, in two weeks, I have a great, fantastic thing to tell you. And you'll have to come back, as it used to be on the continuum drama. Two weeks, I promise you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. We appreciate your <coughs> contribution to county government, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say in two weeks. All right, we'll move on to presentations. Next, we have presentations. We have our own uh, Director Frederick Perry that's coming next. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Regarding the C Civic HR County yes, Good morning, Madam <coughs> Chair, Board of Commissioners. Just wanted to, uh, as, uh, as uh, Donna Lee Stroud and Lisa Burford come, uh, they're okay. going to actually run through it. They are, they are the ones who are on the front lines with the Civic HR that we have in place. So I wanted to just give you all just an overview of uh, this online applicant tracking and onboarding system that you all were uh, very gracious enough to, to afford to us, and we're very appreciative of it. Uh, we've gotten your great feedback. Donna has already told me not to steal her thunder, so I'm not going to talk too much. I'm going to let her take it from here. Thank you, Frederick. And I would like to thank Madam Chair, the members of the board, the members of the technology board, and the citizens for allowing us to come up today and speak with you and share our excitement about our new system and hope that you will uh, find it just as beneficial uh, to the county as we have. Um, we have two components to the system, and it's the applicant tracking system and the onboarding system. Applicant tracking allows our applicants to create an account, and they can apply for multiple jobs without having to complete another online application. The applications can be edited, and they can upload multiple documents if they wanted to do a license or a resume, anything that their birth certificate, anything that they would like to upload. The applicants can sign up for alerts that let them know each time we post a new position and we're getting a lot of good <coughs> feedback about this, it's going to invite that opportunity. Um, so that's a good thing for us. The system sends an email reminder if the applicant doesn't complete their application. Sometimes you might get excited, go through the application. We do have um, very, a lot of required fields that are in the application. So if you try to submit it without completing those required fields, it will let you know that there's something else that you need to complete on the application. The system tracks the number of views we receive on the county, and we've got a um, slide for you to see on that that I think you'll find very exciting. And based on the job ad requirements, we can build into the system specific questions on a particular job that the applicants have to answer. Um, say if, there, if a particular department wants you to have a bachelor's degree, an associate's, or a, a number of years that you've been in that particular field, then we can build that into the application for them to answer as a required field. Um, the hiring departments can select the candidate status um, that generates an email letter to that candidate, it's, let's say if they interview them but they're not selected for the interview, then they can select that status that will send them an automatic letter that says thank you, we appreciate your time for applying and so forth. Also does that for those that are not interviewed. And the system tracks the external resources where the job ads are posted and we're real excited about that opportunity so we can see where our candidates are coming from. <coughs> This is the number of applications that we have received to date. We went online with the system on October 2nd of 2018. So you can see that we started out pretty good then toward the end of the year, which is normal for us in Douglas County. Toward the end of the year, things, the holidays are happening, not so many people applying for jobs. But then in January, we, would, we hit the highest mark that we've hit since I've been here in four and a half years in tracking the number of applicants applications that we receive. So that's a good number. And then this is very exciting for us, the number of views um, that we see per month. So this is telling us that the citizens are coming to our website and seeing that we have online application system and they're going in and looking at that, whether they apply or not, at least we are getting views from um, a lot of people, nine, almost 10,000 in January. So that's a great number for us, very excited about that. 
The onboarding system, we just went live with this uh, last week, and it, it allows us to have a, an employee portal where the new hire can go in and access forms that normally we would have them fill out the paperwork. It takes about you know, 15, 20 minutes for them to come in the office, sit down, and us go over the paperwork with them. But with this, they can do this in the convenience of their home. Um, they can do it on their time instead of our time. They fill out, um, they can view our dental insurance, our health and dental insurance information, be familiar with that before they come to orientation on that first day of their new job. And they can review the merit system and other new hire forms that we have for them. And the, the portal contains um, those standard, uh, the standard forms like your tax forms and your I-9 that's automatically built in, but it does allow us to customize some forms for particular for Douglas County. And uh, then we can create a custom onboarding plan that's specific for full-time and part-time employees. Some of the feedback that we've gotten from our applicants is that it's easy to use and they do like the job alert feature that sends that email to them and says, hey, we've posted another job, check it and see if you're interested. And it's much better for them than filling out the paper application. The departments have shared with us that they're able to read the applications versus the, the online applications versus the handwritten one, which is a good thing. They like to be able to view the applications online and only printing the ones that they need or that they're wanting to interview. They like the status feature and they like the idea of the emails being sent to the candidates. Just a, another way for us to reach out and thank our candidates for applying. And human resources, we absolutely love the new system and we do thank um, the technology board and the board of commissioners and Madam Chair for granting us the opportunity to purchase that system. And uh, we do have to, no longer do we have to manually log or scan those applications in, which is great. And it saves us on paper <coughs> and printer time. And I would be glad to enter any, entertain any questions that you might have. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Um, comments? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, very, very good presentation, thank first you, of sir. all. Um, excellent. Um, thank you for, for sharing it. Very accurate, very. Um, this has been um, a long time coming. Yes, sir. Um, um, you know, one of the things that, that citizens, you know, a lot of times they, they do want to experience their tax dollars, right? Not only do they want their roads paid, but they also want access to their government. And some of that, some of that access is about jobs. And historically, you know, there's the perceptions, as we always talk about perceptions, that people within the county were locked out from, from partaking of these jobs that are given. You know, Madam Chair has what uh, over about a thousand employees, and it's 150,000 citizens, 100,000 adults. And every now and then, they they like, well, can I work for my local government? And it just seems like there was there was no easy access because again, when you had to go downstairs, and it seemed to be this perceived wall um, down at the front desk, and people just felt though that they didn't have a fair chance. There was no transparency. There was an opportunity, an equal opportunity to apply. And this this tool here, I'm sitting here like, okay, now. That's Douglas County. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can, there, there's a rare chance. There's no guarantee, but at least you have consideration. At least you know that it exists. And I like the fact that people, they may not apply, but at least they're viewing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not certain if it has unique views versus um, people who come back, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's a lot of people, 10,000, that's great, great access. So I just want to give kudos that, you know, for the citizens that, that believe that, because there, were, there are jobs. We've always had jobs. We know people have jobs. We have openings, and people just don't know about it, but it was always who you knew, and, and they would tell you, and it was this very closed system, and I, I think that, that hurt us as a county that, but we're all citizens. <clears throat> we all live here, uh, and so it shouldn't be a, a privileged um, place to, to apply for jobs that we all obviously are paying into the system. So I'm just encouraged to see this well done, um, and so I yield my comments. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, very good. Vice Chairman Robinson. Commissioner Geiger. Yeah, so uh, Donna, would you mention what the what departments they can apply for positions in or on this side? Uh, well, it's for any any of the departments that have current job ads. Uh, we post them 
am I understanding your question correctly? But does it include the fire department? Yes, ma'am. Any does of the county include jobs. the sheriff's office? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's what I wanted to point out. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Commissioner Mitchell? Yes, just sure. one. So, uh, for those, and it's probably more of a technology question for our technology guys. However, for those that might be trying to upload a virus or hack and that kind of stuff to keep us, how are we, how are we protecting ourselves from that? And I'm glad, you know, that we've got the system. I think this is perfect for, for those in Douglas County and anywhere else who wants to apply for a job here. I'm glad about that. Just questioning what kind of protection firewalls and, and that kind of stuff that we have in play to protect us. You know, and, and some may not even know that they're holding the virus and it's their resume, but there's something behind the scenes that's doing its thing and trying to hack into our system. So kind of are we, are we, are we kind of paying attention to that or how was that point? Yeah, and Donna, I'll take a stab at that. <laughs> if you have anything to add to please feel free. That's one of the things that we talk uh, with uh, the Civic HR about, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, is uh, the security of their system. Yes. Because all of the data that is uploaded, is uploaded to their servers, so it's housed on their servers, Got it. And, uh, and we have access to it. So uh, they have assured us that they have all of the latest and greatest firewalls and, uh, and security, uh, <coughs> online security systems in place. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we made a presentation to uh, the technology committee, mm -hmm. and that was one of the things that, uh, that, that we talked about extensively. Right. So, so we feel fairly confident that, you know, we are protected from viruses and things of that nature. Right. If it's uploaded on their system, it's actually housed there. First, so first, or, or the first or did, did we have well, how was there, period. Okay. Oh, period, okay. 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 gotcha. Yeah, we have access to it, so. <laughs> gotcha, <laughs> thank you. Uh, how are we planning on making the citizens of Douglas County just fully aware that we've got this great system in place that you can apply, mm -hmm. sit in your house online on your phone and kind of do your thing and, <coughs> and apply for these jobs? So are we, are we making sure that the programming committee and or Mark and these guys are fully engaged with making people aware? Of, of this. Well, I believe that we did a, uh, a, uh, a press release on uh, on it, and, uh, uh, and we can continue. We made it known on our website mm -hmm. that we were moving to the online application. So anybody who actually visited our website saw that it was coming, mm -hmm. and uh, and actually, uh, you know, when we launched it in October of 18, mm -hmm. uh, we, we put it on the website as well. So. That was the extent of the uh, the communication that we used to put it out to the community. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and it's been going well so far. As you can see, we have a lot of views. Mm -hmm. uh, in January, it was uh, right at knocking around 10,000 10, mm -hmm. views. So, I think the word is out now that uh, that we haven't done anything in terms of the signal or anything like that. Right. But we can very well do that. I, I would hope that we will kind of take those kind of steps to make sure that those that maybe don't know or live under a rock would know <laughs> about it. Um, and we do, Commissioner. We, When someone comes into the office and they're not sure about how to apply, we do have a, a business card that we give them that gives them the information to go to the website and we explain to them that it's an online system and uh, gives them the, the uh, the information on how to apply. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. What's the website? Is it the Celebrate Douglas? Yes, yeah, sure. okay, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay. Um, and, and with those, um, that deals in economic development, uh, with Chris and all these guys, are we making them aware that, that this exists? Not that they will probably want to, you know, Google and others want to, you know, kind of be online, but are we having those kind of conversations to say, hey guys, you know, come to the higher Douglas billions, they can mm -hmm. kind of get a, a break and all that kind of good stuff, so. Well, we haven't had that conversation uh, as of yet, but I talk with Chris on the regular, so, uh, and I see him back there. So. Yeah, I, I know he's back there, so I just heard him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, but I, I just want to make sure that definitely that we do some true marketing and continually do some marketing, because I don't think okay. just that one hit wonder is not going to mm -hmm. be enough. Uh, and, and get with Rick and others to just make sure that we, you know, kind of continue to put the word out there, Absolutely. whether it's, you know, leaflets, cards, mm -hmm. um, you know, make folks fully aware that, you know, they can use this online because I think this is going to be a huge, you know, uh, benefit mm -hmm. 
So not only the citizens of Douglas County, but definitely the citizens who are looking for employment. Okay. And, it, and the system does have a feature that we've not had the opportunity to use yet, but it has an invite feature mm -hmm. that say, perhaps you apply for one job and then you come in and talk to us about it and that job was filled or what have you. Um, we, Lisa and I, um, generally talk to that person and say, well, what exactly are you looking for? Mm -hmm. And if we find something that we, you know, that they're interested in, then we have the ability to send them an invite if a All position right. like that comes up. <coughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay, what you're welcome. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you so much. Commissioner Carpenter. Great job, Donna. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Um, my question to you is, and maybe to um, Director Perry as well, is have you had a chance to look at how much manpower <coughs> time this has saved your department? Well, we well, haven't quantified it yet, but, it, you know, just from, from talking with Donna, the phone has slowed down a lot okay. uh, from calls, from folks calling to just check status of application and things of that nature. We're able to to do that electronically via email and, uh, and things of that nature. But, um, and I can share this with you, that um, since we have, the, have gotten uh, gone online, I have a lot <coughs> more on my desk to do that <laughs> this gentleman passes <laughs> along to me. So he knows I have extra available time now. <laughs> That's good. And on the back end, on the analytics or big data side, are you able to kind of pull to see what people are, um, where their skill sets are to see if, you know, if you're, if you're applying for a job, but there are certain skill sets that you're looking for, are the mm -hmm. applicants actually qualified for that? Are you able to see that on the back end? Or and and those Donna, if you, if you could, we can actually, and that's a great question, Commissioner, we can actually set the system. I don't know if we have yet or not, mm -hmm. but we can set specific questions mm -hmm. that will, are tailored to positions, whether they have a degree, whether they have so many years of experience, um, whether they've supervised before, things of that nature, we can set uh, uh, specific questions to ask that. So if you don't qualify, it'll, it'll eliminate you. We haven't set that up yet, if I'm not mistaken. We have. Um, we do. You have the ability to build what's called assessments. And so um, just like, say, if Mr. Peacock has a particular job that he wants to post, we have a job description and we build from that job description the job ad. And that's what we're posting on the online system is the actual job ad that has particular requirements for that job. So we take those requirements and build an assessment into the application so if you are let's say that bill is particularly looking for someone that has uh, two years purchasing experience then we would build that assessment to say the purchasing department is looking for an individual that has two years purchasing experience do you have this knowledge mm -hmm. and we can build it to where they answer yes or no or they can put the number of years experience that they have so there are ways for us to and these are called basic minimum qualifications mm -hmm. and so there's a way that you can meet those basic minimum qualifications does not necessarily <coughs> kick you out of the opportunity mm -hmm. to apply but it shows the department those individuals that are that have the um, requirements that they're looking for. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. We we were able to go in and actually see the candidates that have met those requirements. Oh, okay. Thanks. As we decide who to interview with this yeah. like that. Nice. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for this groundbreaking technology. Donna, Lisa, and also <coughs> Director Perry. You all, uh, you stepped up to the plate, you followed the vision, uh, you realized that we cannot stay uh, in that conventional mode. Now we're competing because you want the best and brightest uh, applicants as they come through. And a, a lot of people are busy or in different places. Now you can even apply for jobs in Douglas County if you're in another state. That, that really helps rather than trying to come down and, and pick up a piece of paper. So thank you so much for the online application process. I'm sorry, online application process. Onboarding is very important. And our next step, as we talked about, and something coming down the pipe a little later would be that performance evaluation component that allow our directors to be more efficient with their evaluations. And they will be more uh, performance-based rather than just reactionary, they'll be performance-based. So 
All right, so that's right. more to come. You all are doing a great job. So proud of you, you. and, and you. what you all are doing in HR. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. All right, our next uh, presentation is we have a SPLOSS update. Uh, and I thought it was Terry Gable, but what, sir, I need to put you in. I'm so sorry. Uh, my name is Russell Small. Russell, Russell Small. Mm -hmm. Come forward. Thank you so much. Mr. Gable is not here with us today. He's on vacation. He's on yeah. vacation. Terry's taking a much deserved few days off. And I understand that you are his boss. So well, yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much. In the structure of the company, that's, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. And he asked me if I would fill in for him today. And I told him yes. And welcome. Thank I'm so you. happy that you're here. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go through with the splice update now and go over um, go over the projects that, that we got going on. Um, this is the uh, the cost by the cost by the program uh, program element. Uh, each division transportation, fire, EMS, and parks and recreation and how it's divided up. Um, this is the uh, the fire and EMS uh, public radio, and you can see. Um, the uh, total figure one employees approved today are uh, 13.4 million dollars. Um, this is a breakdown on the transportation. It's uh, uh, total invoices approved today about 6.7 million dollars. Um, parks and recreation approved today 911 million dollars. Um, and then uh, this is the uh, revenue collections. This is the initial estimate versus the uh, actual collection. Uh, this is the two year, as you can see, um, started off a little little low but uh, the last few months it's uh, picked up and been collecting a little more than projected um, this is the uh, year one and two projections you can see we've got a projected overage of uh, a little over a million dollars um, a total of 43 million dollars has been uh, brought in versus the 42 million uh, that was the, uh, the the original projection um, this is the the two-year revenues um, the total overage is 1.4 million dollars um, the actual nine month revenues, um, it's got $19.5 million for the nine months in the second year of this block, uh, where we had a projected uh, 18 million, 18.1 million in the first nine months of the block. So um, the last few months have been pretty good. December, December was real good with the 2.5 million, where we had a little over 2 million uh, projected. Um, this is the bond servicing information. We've got the uh, Payment due on the bonds. We paid one in October of uh, 1.3 million, but we got the big one due October 1st of 16.3 million dollars. Um, moving into the fire and EMS uh, projects, that's 32 percent of the program. Um, these are the completed projects, and uh, I think the ones that's been added since last month. You had your uh, ambulance procurement, you had your fire trucks and engines. Um, and also staff vehicle procurements, as I understand it, all those have come in and are now in service, um, being used by the uh, fire department. Um, the countywide digital radio systems. Uh, of the, uh, of the uh, nine sites, uh, the towers have been installed, the towers and the shelters have been installed on six of them, and they're working uh, to try to get the other three completed. Um, the project's uh, moving along on schedule. Um, schedule to be completed later this year. Uh, the uh, the uh, towers and the uh, uh, shelters and equipment and all will be completed actually uh, a few months before the completion date you see there, but there's a lot of testing that goes on with those, so it'll take a while to, to test those. Um, but everything's going along well with those, and uh, got a big invoice on those back in uh, in December. Um, so um, we've, uh, uh, the spending is now in line with the, where it was projected on that project. Um, station three renovations. Uh, these stations are nearing, uh, the station is nearing completion. Hope to wrap it up in uh, March or April. Um, it's a little bit ahead of schedule. It was originally scheduled to be completed by the end of April, and uh, that uh, that should be met uh, without a lot of, unless we run across some kind of unexpected issue. Um, all right, we'll move on into the transportation portion. Um, you know, we don't have any new uh, new completed projects to show this month, but the resurfacing project, resurfacing program, um, that is complete with the exception of some striping that hasn't been done. And that's mostly waiting on um, the weather. We've had a lot of bad weather as well as uh, asphalt cure time. We didn't let the asphalt cure before we put the final striping down. But that should be completed uh, relatively soon. Um, the LMIG projects, uh, the, we're tracking both uh, the county's money and the, and the state money. Um, I think uh, 
25 of the 88 projects are being done um, on the county's money. That I understand the county is buying the materials and providing the labor, um, but that's been uh, slowed down a little bit by uh, some of the uh, some of the bad weather that we've had. Yeah. Uh, Lee Road Extension Study. Uh, the study is complete and uh, been approved by the board. I think that one next month will be shown to the completed page. It'll be moved over there. Um, the Douglas County DOT project engineer is uh, advertising applications are being accepted um, and I guess that will hopefully lead to some qualified applicants that uh, that uh, the county can hire a qualified person for that uh, position. Um, Stuart Mill and Reynolds Road. Um, this one recently got the hydrology study approved. The designer got the hydrology study approved by WSA, which was a big hurdle. Um, they're moving forward with the preliminary plans, and they should have the preliminary plans uh, available to uh, to present in March. So we can get those plans. They'll be reviewed, and as long as everything um, comes along or is looking well, then it'll move on to the next stage, and uh, hopefully can get the get it let uh, and get it started sometime this summer. Um, Bright Star Road, John West Road. Um, this de design is basically done. Uh, working on some parcels on that one. Um, we think that's going to be a, a March or April letting and start sometime this summer. Uh, Sweetwater Church Road, Doors Road. Um, the plans are, are basically complete, about 90% complete. There's some ut utility coordination uh, going on, um, but that one should be ready to uh, be let this spring. <coughs> Um, the Chapel Hill Road intersections. Um, this one is in the preliminary design. Um, right now, we're getting information together to make available for a public meeting. Um, I think the location of that meeting, has that been set, David? Or? It has been set, but we're looking at um, Shepherd of the Hills on Church. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're uh, uh, coming along with a preliminary design on that one. Um, Highway 5, Douglas Boulevard. Um, We've been working on, uh, Miguel's been having a feasibility study done um, and looking to send out an RFP for, or an RFQ, I'm sorry, for a designer um, at the end of this month, end of February. Uh, this is Highway 92, Anawiki Road. Um, as y'all know, that one, that project has uh, been inactive and the funds have been transferred for some other things. Part of it, uh, a large part of it is going to the uh, Lee Road project. And then the other, some uh, O&M projects, um, some traffic signals, lights, sidewalks, and that kind of thing. And next month, we will have the revised slides mm -hmm. to show the, the projects that we're, that we're using. Um, Post Road at Dog River. This is a uh, GDOT project that has been led. Uh, the contractor's got several projects around the state that he's working on, and this one is scheduled to be done. Uh, by the DOT. They should start on it late this year, hopefully December or January. We'll be checking with them again uh, next month to see if we can get another update to, to give us a little more information to, about uh, exactly when that one's going to start. Um, the next three are sidewalk projects um, and those uh, uh, Lithia Springs, Chestnut Log Middle School and New Manchester High School. Um, the plans are about 90% done. Um, looks like we should have those complete by the end of February, have them completed so that they can be reviewed. Um, need to make any necessary changes, and then uh, we should get those uh, put out in bid um, in the spring. You mentioned um, Transportation procurement. Um, that's all done. This month, or are we still waiting on a couple of things? We're yeah, we're still waiting. That's right. On the, the two dump trucks and the two moors, which are supposed to come in in the next 45 days. Uh, everything else has been uh, has been purchased for this year and uh, is in use. Uh, parks and recreation projects. Um, nothing, uh, no new completed projects, but uh, got some projects moving along. This is Boundary Waters Restroom Concession Building. Um, they have. Uh, Finished the block work out there and started to frame the second floor. This is as of last week. Um, so they've had a lot of bad weather and the way that project sits on the site is very wet out there, but they've, they've made some good progress and now that they're out of the ground, um, they should be able to finish, the, finish it in uh, May or June um, and get that turned over to the county. 
the uh, boundary water soccer field lighting, the light poles are in place, the majority of the wiring has been done, the panel box and the controls for those lights are actually going in the concession building that's being constructed. Um, and so they're coordinating, uh, the, the uh, West Georgia, the contractor for the lighting is coordinating with uh, ICANN, the contractor for the building, when they get their room ready, they will run the controls and put the switches, put the switches in there, um, and that will complete the light project. Um, and the final payment won't be made on this lighting project until that final tie-in connection is made. It, it made. Um, Deer Lake Tennis Court resurfacing and lighting. Um, we're going to uh, rebuild the courts and lights and fence and replace the restroom, and that one's in preliminary design. So you're probably looking at uh, getting it uh, lit sometime, probably in the spring, maybe the summer. Um, the multi-purpose recreation center. Uh, this one, um, the design is coming along good. They're in the process now of doing things like picking out colors and finished materials, and they've selected the, the gym floor. Um, it's moving along, and I'm hoping to bid it probably in May or June. Um, we'll be able to get construction started in either late spring or early summer. And then the, the senior center, it's right behind uh, the multi-purpose center as far as um, where they are in the project. They've got um, started working on picking some of the finishes We're in that stage of the project. Um, it's moving along well. Um, and that one should be probably not too long after the, uh, the rec center. I'm at the uh, multi-purpose center. And uh, Bill, Ark, Bill Ark Park, uh, tearing down and rebuilding the concession building. Um, <coughs> um, we're in the design in that one, and if there's money, enough money in it, we'll also uh, replace some fencing out there, but that one is going to bid around the 1st of April. Um, the same at Bill Art and at uh, Fair Play Park. Um, in the Fair Play Lights replacements, um, the, uh, this one's under contract. The contractor turned into some metals on the lights. They've done some demo work. The some metals got approved. They ordered the lights and poles a couple of weeks ago and said it would be a six or eight week delivery time, which is typical for that kind of equipment. So that equipment should be coming out now, I guess in uh, four to six weeks. And when they get it in, they'll start uh, installing it all. Uh, miscellaneous equipment purchases. Um, well, parks and rec, that's, uh, that's done for this last year. Got all their materials in. I mean, all their equipment in. And that's it for our current report. OK, your questions from the board for the Vice Chairman Bonson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be very quick. Um, two, two questions, or two sections. Transportation, Miguel, give him some cover just for a quick second. I want to um, uh, focus specifically on SR92 and Anna Wakey. Um, you did acknowledge, which was important, that the Board of Commissioners passed uh, a resolution in our last um, legislative meeting to um, inactivate that project of $6 million and reallocate or reappropriate those funds, $5 million to Lee Road, and then another million dollars to the o and that you spoke of. Um, it's not in the report, but we want to emphasize that amount. Um, there are traffic lights, regular lights on streets, and sidewalks that need to be addressed. The Board of Commissioners did not speak to how that $1 million would be distributed. Um, there's no percentage, but it's just based on, in moving that project from SR92, you still have got to deal with the traffic at the end of Riverside and, and Fairburn Road. So uh, that's a traffic light, uh, but then everything else has to be distributed. Miguel, uh, what is our approach to deal with lights? Um, um, uh, is there going to be highway intersections, I mean, highway, highways, um, door set shows. I mean, we asked our, our fellow commissioners to give us a list of lights now because uh, this is an active project that is above the line and it's going to be moving, so you need to get your lights in. But Miguel, how, how are we going to approach that? Can you just speak to that briefly? Certainly. Uh, there's, and I'm assuming that you're referring to street lights, not yes. traffic signals. Yes. Yes. Uh, there will be an assessment phase for where uh, the lights can be installed. Uh, you may recall that at, uh, along Riverside Drive, there were quite a number of traffic lights that were in, uh, uh, installed uh, for what was not a tremendous amount of money. Uh, so <clears throat> that as a reference <coughs> would 
caution that you are not likely to be able to replicate that kind of expenditure for what we got. So the number of lights that you may get at another intersection has to be assessed based on specifics for the location. Uh, but there would be a process. Uh, we would make an assessment. Uh, there have been uh, commissioners that have expressed a concern about a certain area. We would take a look at that, and then we would come back with a with a cost uh, estimate for <coughs> that particular area, and then the board will have to prioritize and and make an actual allocation for specific projects. And, and keep, keep it simple. Stay there. And, and to that point, and I've heard this consistently, so I'm going to extend this. When I hear things that are in preliminary design, right, and, and this is also related to maybe a perception that we may be behind in intersections. Like we just don't, it doesn't appear that we're moving um, as fast as, as long as we should be. Um, uh, who actually is responsible for preliminary design? Is it uh, Director Peacock? Is it a director? Um, a department head? Is it Moreland? Is it some type of standby consultant? You know, some firm? What is it? How, how, do, how do we get out of preliminary design over to a form of design where we're actually getting a, a firm to come in to do that? Because I see them very distinctively different. And I want to know where, the, where, where I'm trying to get to. Actually, uh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, different phases yep. to, to get to the construction phase, which is what everybody wants to get right. to. Uh, mm -hmm. But even before you get to preliminary design, there is a procurement process. Okay. So uh, initially, there, there would be, depending on the type of project, if it's for consulting services, then it would be a, a request for qualification. And so there's a vetting process of consultants uh, to be assigned to specific projects. That starts with the transportation department. We, we put the document together in conjunction with purchasing in terms of dates and scope and, and uh, things like that. But so we coordinate that effort. If, if it's a bid, separate, uh, separate track. We put together bid documents as well in coordination with purchasing, and that goes to advertisement, and then we receive bids. <clears throat> but the one you're speaking about, I think, deals more with the consulting side. And so initially there would be a request, well, let me back up, because initially you have to identify that there's a need, and then there has to be a prioritization by the board or a committee that we should pursue a particular effort. So then comes a package that is advertised for services. So it starts with the department, then we go to the process of vetting a consultant, making a selection, and actually awarding a contract for preliminary engineering or sometimes for scoping, which is a, an earlier phase of preliminary engineering. Stay, stay right there, and I, 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 want, I don't want to take too much time because we've got a pretty full agenda, and I'm sure my peers want to weigh in. Uh, but I want to focus just on that, which is, it gets down to bandwidth. I'm, I'm listening, and I'm like, but, but who is actually going to be that key executive that's going to go in the corner and do this? Right, who, who now I looked at, you said we have a project engineer and we're waiting to get, I'm like, what would that person do? Versus, I'm, I'm trying to get to, so, because my concern is that we're, we're perceived behind a little bit on intersections, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger over time. And, I, I, and, it, it, and, and transportation just takes time. It takes what it takes. But how do we ensure that all this preliminary work, because I keep hearing these words, all this preliminary design, I'm like, okay, but who's doing it? And, I, and I, I'm, I'm wanting to know, do you need because we've asked this before, standby civil engineer, mechanical engineer. We've had these conversations before. We've had it as a board as well. Is it time to reintroduce that? Because I just don't want to get behind. Uh, and, and, and so let's be proactive. It's acknowledged. So this is it's like, what do we need to do to ensure that we, we, we're, we might have, it may be perceived and it may not be real, but how do we ensure we, we don't get behind on this? Because again, it's, it's, it's the work that's necessarily getting to get done. And, I see a bandwidth challenge. Can you speak to that? Yes, certainly. Uh, I'll speak to, to the first uh, element of your uh, statement and, and uh, concern. Internally, we have a number of vacant positions that we have not been able to fill. Uh, at this time, 
essentially I've been the one putting together the documents uh, in my spare time, so to speak. Uh, so, so it is a bit of a drag on the, the bandwidth, as you put it. Uh, but to your second element, there are, uh, we are in the process of putting together, or I am in the process of putting together an RFQ, a Request for Qualifications, which follows a very similar process as the other project-specific one, but this is going to be for uh, on-call or on-demand consultants. And so it will take in all of the different disciplines. It will take in the design of intersection. It, it will take in uh, white road widening, road, new road alignment, all of the different types of disciplines that would be needed including inspections and testing and the like to get projects to the final uh, goal, which is construction. Okay. So that element will be advertised in March and we will be receiving uh, uh, qualifications from the consultants in April to address the issue of moving the projects forward because essentially over the last year and a half or so, uh, we have been doing project-specific requests for qualifications, and uh, that is time-consuming and not as efficient as going this other route, which uh, which we are. Okay, and I, I, that's good enough, and we can take that up in transportation committee. Now, I was just sort of teeing up what, what we want to ultimately get to, but it, but it speaks to it for the board of commissioners to. to to, to give consideration, and I don't know what role Moreland plays in this. I mean, again, they're supposed to, at least for, I know you're, you're SPLOS and non-SPLOS. You're all of it. <laughs> but as it relates to the SPLOS component, perhaps can Moreland um, help us in that regard? I mean, can you give me a, an interim um, uh, assistant deputy director to come and handle some of this this, this design work that, again, you're, you, it's only so many hours that you, you have to be that guy, and it's like, it's, it's the obvious. And so uh, I don't know what role Moreland plays. Maybe that's um, Commissioner, um, County Administrator, Madam Chair. Y'all can talk about how we could use Moreland to a certain extent, but I would not be opposed because, I mean, even it's taking you time to find a number two. It's taking you time to find this engineer. Now we're about to introduce something else to just, like, can we just get somebody that's already on deck right now? We already got a rate card. Can we just keep this thing moving so we don't get behind? But I'll, I'll yield to you guys as Madam Chair, your call. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Commissioner Kreider. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner uh, Robinson referred to a list of red lights that we were all asked to do. Uh, when were we asked to do that? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, street lights. Street lights. What did I say, red lights? Yes, you said red lights. Okay, street lights? Street mm -hmm. lights. So this is not for the intersections. These are not the lights for the intersection. Street Okay. I misunderstood what we were talking about then. Uh, <clears throat> do we uh, plan outside the scope of the splash and everything for intersections <clears throat> where we do need red lights? Yes, we do. Uh, in fact, we're going to be starting that process in April as well, and it's called the Comprehensive Transportation Plan <coughs> Update. And that is going to be a year or 15 months of ongoing discussion between staff, cities, stakeholders, uh, looking at the needs throughout the county. And so it is through that vehicle that we identify where improvements are needed of what type. And we put a preliminary planning level estimate on those things. And that document, after about, say, 15 months, comes to the board to adopt, which mm -hmm. the last time the board adopted uh, the comprehensive plan was, I believe, in 2010, so about eight years ago. So uh, even if it in, in includes a state highway, it, uh, yes. we're, we're going to be looking at that because we've got a couple of them in my district, uh, like Berea Road <coughs> is very bad intersection. <laughs> But um, I just wondered, uh, are we planning on it now? Or are we working on it now? And well, should we be putting, uh, having our input into that list? Well, no, that process um, for your input isn't in place yet. 
Uh, but especially if it's on a state route, because generally any any project on a state route, you want to take advantage of federal funds. In order for the project to be granted federal funds, it has to be incorporated into the comprehensive transportation plan. So we want to make sure that uh, that they're in there. We have the discussion again. It's going to take a good 15 months, and it, everybody's going to be at the table. Uh, the, the the board of commissioners, uh, uh, members of the planning and zoning board, uh, staff uh, from various departments within the county, the cities, and general stakeholders throughout uh, throughout the county. In fact, I will be coming to you uh, to. Uh, have a list of stakeholders designated for, for that effort. Uh, we have a, a project that's in the splash, on the splash list now, the Highway 5 Douglas Boulevard. And uh, I was, I got caught in that traffic this, uh, this weekend and I was all the way back to Red Lobster for that intersection. <laughs> and it's that way every weekend, it's, it's terrible. Uh, have we requested from our state uh, representatives and legislators uh, maybe some additional funding on their part since it is uh, a state highway, Highway 5 is a state highway, so have we uh, gone to them and said, look, we've got the money to match uh, a right turn lane if you're traveling north on Highway 5, can you help us with the funds? Have we, we, that? we have not done that because although that is on the SPLOS list, it is not in the Comprehensive Transportation Plan. So it would not be um, subject to be able to receive funds at this time. We fully do intend to develop it as part of SPLOS and depending on where it comes in, if, if, if the estimate, once we do the preliminary analysis, if the estimate is that it's going to take a couple million dollars to do it, then I will present that to the board and you have a decision to make. Do you, do you fully fund it through SWAS or are you going to try and leverage federal funds? Uh, if, the, if the cost uh, estimate is a million, and I'll do the same thing. And you may decide a million dollars, maybe we can just do it out of SWAS. That would be your decision at the time. But at, at this point, because, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, how far back you were waiting to make that turn, because that is part of our issue. Obviously, uh, we need a turn lane. Typically, a turn lane might be 250, 300 feet, but that is not a typical location. And there are some signs, that, as, as we've talked about before, that are, were built, unfortunately, in the way of a potential <coughs> uh, deceleration lane that extends <coughs> far enough back away from the intersection towards Red Lobster. Well, we don't want the signs to interfere with the project, though, but uh, uh, maybe if we had contacted the owner of that, uh, that strip mall sooner, they would have known you know, what was in the plans. To, uh, do we ever communicate ahead of time when we're, uh, we've got a long-term plan in place? Do we communicate with property owners and we're, we're pushing to put a, a right-turn lane here and we're going to have to take some of your right away? Well, there's a couple of components to your, to your question. Uh, whenever <coughs> there are federal funds involved in, on a project, you, you have to follow a certain sequence. You can't reach out related to land acquisition until you get to the proper step in the process. <clears throat> so that is one component. The other component is that shopping center is in the city. And so applications that come in for development, for expansion, for improvements, they don't come to us. They go to the city and the city approves them, and then they go to construction, and we find out when we start seeing the construction. So we, I've communicated with the city as it relates to those, so that any future development on that corner, they are anticipating 
and they flagged it so that they're aware and they've indicated to us that they will request that the developer dedicate right of way for that corner parcel. We have it on our splash list. Why did not the city have it on their splash list? <laughs> if it's in the city. I think, I don't know exactly, but, but I believe that it was added to our list, that it may not have been in the original list. I don't know. It was before my time. Uh, <coughs> and, and you also mentioned that you are so <coughs> positions short. Is that because you haven't had time to go out and, and seek uh, to fill those positions? We've been, we've been seeking, but um, <coughs> unfortunately the, the salaries are not always as competitive as uh, others are willing to pay. And so we have less applicants than, than, than we would like. Uh, and do you have a position for a right-of-way uh, person? We do. And just will deal with that. Yes, we do. And, and that is a position that is filled, and, and that person is <coughs> helping us tremendously with, uh, with the acquisition. In fact, even though this was before my time, uh, I was particularly impressed with how the acquisition process went for the Lee Road widening project. Because a project of that magnitude very seldom is handled in house for acquisition purposes. And it was done here. That's good. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mitchell? Just, just one. Um, not for you, but for the, this boss team. Uh, so we're, we're about a meal over uh, in, in Oak Ridge as to where we are at this point in time with this boss. Because at one time we're behind in the collection rate. Correct. Yes. Uh, so that's that's a that's a good place to be, uh, and we're averaging what? And I think I think I heard out in and out of room. My apologies. Like two point five in December. I think you said. Or that was the collection in two point in uh, December. Two point five million. Two point five. Okay. Okay. So we're in a good space. And looking at listening to what you said about the bonds that we're getting ready for the nice healthy payment compared to deal with. So we're in a good position that. There should be any issues with the, the payment of the bond. We should be kind of moving right along on that. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, on the um, project, the uh, the radio site project. <coughs> there were three. We're looking for three other sites to try to complete the three other sites. Am I correct? Yes, sir. <coughs> oh, do we know where they are? Or are we trying to find the sites? Or uh, uh, yeah. to be honest with you, I don't know where they are, but. but we know where they are. You can step up on the don't know. You don't know? Okay, you don't know. I just know that there are spots. Okay, I've got okay. an answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chief, we do have the, the, okay. <laughs> the, the last three sites. Yes. Uh, Austell Gas. Okay, yes, right. Down right. Street in, yes. in Lithia. Right. Uh, we're working on our final site down in Fairplay. Uh huh. Uh, Beside the uh, church. And that'll be just got an executive session today. Yeah, so, so we're, we're in a good space. We're and, in good space. And then the last one is the uh, Show School Road off Highway 92. Yeah. yeah. So, so how far are we off in this project being done, I guess? Are we, are we, I mean, are we on time, time wise? Um, I believe we're on time. Um, Terry and I talked about this last week. I believe we're on time but to be finished toward the end of this year. Got it. Yeah, uh, and, and, and I guess we'll get our 95 percentile type of uh, connection and put repeaters and microwaves in any place else where we're kind of missing that 5 percent or less. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. And, and, and Chief, how do you feel about where we are and how we uh, We feel really good about it. Uh, we meet every two weeks with our with our Motorola mm -hmm. uh, and have a sit down meeting and they give us a progress report on exactly what's been done since the previous two weeks. Got it. Uh, currently, we are doing what they call fleet mapping, mm -hmm. uh, which we're deciding what frequencies go in the radio, what talk groups are going to be used, who's yeah. allowed to use them, uh -huh. uh, and we're, we'll be bringing some uh, MOUs back to the board uh, when we make some of those agreements with the surrounding counties and cities that we need to do that with. Got it, got it. And, and, and this will be through, correct me if I'm wrong, with uh, Cobb, correct? Yes, sir. Our, our master site will actually be Cobb. Uh, <coughs> that's where the majority of the stuff will go through. Right. So, uh, and that's most advantageous for, for us. Right, right. So, and they got the best system, I think, that's out there that I know of. So, 
but I, I'm glad that we are. Okay, all right, uh, that's all I got, and I yield back. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bruss, for your presentation. Just, uh, you had one slide that you, you mentioned regarding parks and recreations that we have spent thus far $911 million. I know we, Gary Dukes, or should I say Director Dukes, would love no. $911 million. But uh, did you mean oh. $911,000? Yes, I did. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we would love that. Yeah, I know you would. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. Great presentation. We'll move on next. Our Board of Commissioners, you have the approval of the minutes. And please take a look at those tomorrow and be prepared to coordinate to proceed as, as um, with the approval. Um, proclamations, we have one tomorrow. Uh, the proclamation will be read by our chairman of the school board, Tracy Rucker, and it is proclaiming the month of February um, as Black History Month in Douglas County. Uh, tab number five, we'll move to the business items. Tab number five, resolutions to approve T5 da data centers, uh, LLC's participation in the Douglas County tax savings, incentive plan and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Director, Executive Director Chris Pumphrey, Douglas County uh, Development Authority. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody can hear me okay? Um, we actually were here just about this time last year uh, for this same company, uh, T5 uh, Data Centers. Um, if you recall, uh, T5 um, acquired 40 acres on Factory Shoals Road. Um, since then, they have sold that property to an, another company. Um, at your last board uh, uh, planning and zoning meeting, uh, you all approved the rezoning of 80 acres uh, adjacent uh, to that property. Um, <clears throat> so what we are here before you today is basically to take what we approved last year on the 40 acres and repurpose that um, to the 80 acres, which is next door. Uh, to that property. I'll give you a little bit of uh, background. Um, as, as you all know, for our target sectors, for, um, industries that we're looking in clusters to grow here in the community, <coughs> data centers fit within that professional, professional and technology services. <coughs> you also know that we've had a lot of growth in that sector, especially recently, um, of data centers in the uh, Sweetwater area. Um, so we completed the Sweetwater Master Plan a few years ago, looking at how do we um, separate residential traffic and land use from industrial and business uh, traffic and land use. And one of the exciting things about the business traffic and land use is the ability to attract these data centers to the area. Uh, they don't bring the truck traffic um, that all of the, the typical industrial buildings bring to the table. Um, they bring higher paying jobs. Uh, so, for example, this particular project will have an average wage of $28.25 an hour, whereas the Douglas County average wage is roughly $18 an hour. So this is well above um, our county average wage. Um, but within that Sweetwater Master Plan, to date, 394 acres are dedicated to data centers um, in, in the Sweetwater Master Plan area. Um, and we've got about 90 acres of data center projects in the pipeline to date. That is exclusive uh, of the T5 project. Um, just a little bit about the property. Um, today, that property, it's an assemblage of acreage, uh, contributes roughly $19,576 a year in property taxes. <coughs> if you uh, stretch that out over a 10-year period, just assuming no appreciation, that's roughly $195,000 over a 10-year period. Um, with this project, with the property tax incentive plan that is before you uh, to be in place, it will only cover um, the property and assets owned by T5. Um, but with that plan in place, with the development in place over a 10-year period, that property will, will um, is projected to contribute $1,922,460 of real estate property taxes to the Douglas County and Douglas County Schools Tax Digest. So a significant um, increase in taxes to, to come to uh, the community even with the, the plan in place. And as I mentioned, the land as is today would only contribute roughly $200,000 in property taxes. Um, this plan is part of our pre-approved property tax incentive plan. Um, we did make some amendments based off of the tax compliance work that we did last year um, to the actual language which is typically in there. 
One of the things to kind of point out in that is typically we've only given 20 days for us to respond um, to a company if they haven't met the, um, the goals and objectives of the tax incentive plan. We've now given ourselves 45 days, which is actually a lot more reasonable, especially when all of the plans are due on April 1st. If all the plans are due on April 1st and three or four of them have issues, we only got 20 days to respond to all three or four. Um, this actually gives us 45 days, a month and a half, to respond um, to the plans. Um, we also have uh, Frank Lyles, um, who's the, one of the chief development officers for T5. It's here as well. I believe you all met him at the, the rezoning hearing. And I've got Frank here if you, if, um, to also talk, talk a little bit about T5 uh, for everyone as well. Thank you. Please come forward, Mr. Lyles. Thank, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, thank you for the opportunity to come before you uh, this morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, as I believe most of you have already heard, but I'll just run through it quickly again for the benefit of those who haven't. Uh, T5 Data Centers is a developer, owner, and operator of data centers across the country. Well, we've got a couple of projects uh, in early stages uh, internationally as well. Um, we have built a portfolio of over worth over a billion dollars in assets across the country and uh, we manage between 1.8 million to 2 million square feet of data center space both on our own account and also for third parties so we manage facilities as well that we don't own uh, to companies such as Delta Airlines, Home Depot, SAP, Walmart and uh, continue to grow that business. Um, we uh, recently, this past year, had a recapitalization of some assets where we sold our Atlanta facility in Alabama. <coughs> we also sold uh, to this other entity the 40 acres that we last year had bought in Douglas County. And so as T5 data centers, we're out of product. And uh, that's uh, the purpose for the 80 acres that we have uh, under contract currently on Factory Shoals Road and uh, Douglas Hill. Um, the plan is to market that to hyperscale users, so the you know very large uh, data center users uh, of the kind you see in the news, like Facebook, uh, Google, Apple, those guys that have very large requirements. So we wanted a solution for them, but we also wanted to be able to address smaller needs, and uh, that's the purpose of the development bond in front of you right now is for phase one, which would contemplate a lead tenant or full building tenant for the first building. We have it planned to be a 10 megawatt facility, about 145,000 feet. Um, the, you know, we would hope to be able to begin construction in, um, I think it was 2021, and have it uh, delivered around 2022. Um, and then, you know, based on the success there, which we hope to see, we'll continue to build out in phases the balance of the park. But what I'm in front of you today is solely for this, this first building to see the park, for lack of a better term. Okay. Uh, Thank any you questions? Much. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Vice Chairman Robson, I believe you have one. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and Chris, and, and hopefully y'all probably could answer this. And, um, again, just for clarifying, you were here last year uh, for T5. Um, it sounds like you, your business model, you sold off that that um, uh, intention, and, and now you have a new one. So it sounds like it, it's speculative to a certain extent uh, where you bring a third party in to, to fill, no problem. Um, just for the commission, as we sort of, we, we extend these incentives to attract um, just an expectation that off of that comes some type of tax, right? Because we're you, you just you're trying to balance what in creating that atmosphere. You, you're trying to anticipate, but when will this come? So are we are we short shorting ourselves? Uh, now we've already proved this. So I'm not getting into zoning or anything like that. But are we shorting ourselves in that um, we were anticipating that um, this be yielding revenue for the commissioners at some point? It, it stalled a year. Um, so in your mind, I mean, we've got two projects in essence. Um, you're the manager and operator of them. Um, give us some assurance, I mean, give us some insight, not assurances. Give us some insight in that 
how far along do you have somebody who's going to come into this or this is something that you're going to do yourselves and if it's strategic and it's competitive and you can't share that's fine you can take me offline i'm just trying to get a feel right and i think you know where i'm going so okay uh, I, I, let me take a crack at that let me know if i don't answer your question so um we uh, you know we develop own and operate the facilities so we intend to continue to own the project the, the entire 80 acres the, the intent is not to just sell it to somebody else. The reason that we had to sell the 40 acres that we acquired last year was that our equity partner was a partner that had a fund they, they were using as their vehicle to invest in our data centers that was near its end of life. And it was really driven by a need to sell. They needed to sell to satisfy their limited partners. And, and so going forward, we have a different equity partner and it will be the pension fund that has a long-term hold strategy and one that's not going to be looking to exit in the near term they're going to want to play this out for 10 years and that's our interest too we want we we don't want to be a merchant builder that just builds sells but right. sells i mean we want to we want to develop and hold for the long term and build up a large portfolio as far as prospects we have um, several smaller prospects that could be a lead tenant to kick off this 145,000 foot building. Um, again, I said our ideal would be to attract a large, you know, what we term hyperscale user that would come in and want to do multiple buildings on that site yeah. and be a much uh, bigger project. Those guys tend to build out very quickly, right? Um, as you may have seen in the news, I mean, Facebook's already underway with their first building and, and near done with it probably by now. Um, if it's of the vein of smaller users, then, you know, this first building, hopefully we would have it up and then it would be full within, say, a three-year uh, period from delivery of the asset itself. Um, meaning we would have it fully leased by that time. And then at that point, you know, we'd want to move on to building two and do that and then keep rolling until we build out the project. Okay, so I think you answered my question. Jennifer, make a note of that three year. Mm -hmm. from, from I'm good. You don't have to belabor it. You've yeah. answered very accurately. Thank you. Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Guide, and then uh, after that, I'll turn Bernard, I believe that none of my other commissions have to. Did you go? I was just going to ask one, one okay. question, but I can wait. You want to go first? Well, I, I just wanted to ask Chris. <laughs> uh, one of the main reasons we give these abatements is to attract jobs. Mm -hmm. And this is just for 10 jobs mm -hmm. over a period of 10 years. The abatement's going to be, um, it really doesn't kick into year four. Uh, so they pay zero tax for the first four years, I think. Uh, so, uh, and then they just pay 10% for two years and then it goes up until the 10th year. Uh, is there a minimum? of jobs that you look, uh, that you require when we give tax abatements? Please. So it'd be helpful to understand the, the business model itself. So <coughs> the business model in this, this is a co-location <coughs> data center. So basically, as Frank mentioned, they are the developer owner, you know, of this, of the asset. So they're, they're going to build the facility and they will have employees of their own that will manage the facility. And so the tax uh, break is for the facility itself. But in order for the facility to actually function, you, have, you actually have to have customers, as which Frank was just referencing, you know, whether it's a large customer or smaller customers, and those customers are bringing servers to the table. So the customers will then make the personal property investment into the, into the data center. And so, yes, on the T5 side, there is the break for those number of years, but the personal property investment um, kicks in right away. So you're going to get the personal property tax revenue and that's actually reoccurring um, taxes because they're constantly refreshing uh, those servers. And then they will have employees of their own. I don't know what that number is itself, but we're basically building this for the T5 really as the foundation to then bring added investment which comes from the, the customers. Well, would their tenant be coming to us and asking for an abatement for them? So the way the, 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 Even on personal property. So, <laughs> so similar to how, this is exactly how we did switch. Whereas the, the incentive plan is built around um, 
providing the advantage to the developer owner. Switch is a, a competitor of T5s. And then just like with Switch, those customers come in and invest the, um, uh, the, the servers. And what we discussed in this the exact discussion we had when we, when we did Switch in this project before, is that because of the constant refresh, it's not typically as beneficial for the end user or the customer to go through the same bond process. And they're solely doing it for the servers themselves. Because uh, the company depreciates at a much higher rate. Yes, yes ma'am. And there also is a state tax incentive that was approved by the legislature last year where their, their biggest advantage comes on the sales and use tax exemption. That's basically on the acquisition of the equipment versus the property tax abatement. And we would we would basically push back on and say that we've we've looked to give the advantage to the developer owner, which basically for the end user lowers their rental cost into the facility. So they're lowering their costs on the sale and use tax and they're lowering their costs on the lease of the asset because we've provided the incentive to the uh, developer owner. Okay, going back to the original question, is there a <coughs> minimum of jobs uh, that, that you consider when you consider abatements? Yes, and so um, so we have a points, it's a point system, and the points are based on number of jobs, average wage, and capital investment. So whereas, yes, the data centers don't contribute a, a significant number of jobs, they, they contribute higher quality jobs. Mm -hmm. So whereas, a prime example is when we had PricewaterhouseCoopers um, in their plan, I think it was going to be for 30 jobs over that time period. They only needed 18, but that 18 actually doubled in payroll. So we'd rather have more higher, higher paying jobs than just a quantity <coughs> of jobs that are at a lower wage. And then as we start to cluster in the area, what we start to get is this cluster of technology-based jobs in the community. And so, you know, when we look at the minimums, we're not, you know, we're, we are still getting jobs, but we're getting more quality jobs and we're clustering those jobs. And then we're also getting more taxes that are coming in as well. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting a huge tax benefit by having these companies come here and they're not requiring the, the number of services that a company who would create 500 jobs would have. So there's a huge offset, you know, that comes into play. Um, now, if it was, you know, we have projects where companies are creating 10 jobs and investing $700,000, well, we're not branding that. Um, you know, we support that company and making sure that they get their permits and things like that. Um, but we, we, we've got to look at what the benefit is. And the benefit on this greatly is the taxes and the, the higher quality jobs. But this is just the beginning for that 80 acres. Yes. You're going to be building more buildings <coughs> on that 80 acres. We hope to. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we like to cram as many on there as big as we can. I yield that. Thank you. Yeah, Chris and yeah. Joe, you may need, Chris may need your help, although he looks like he can handle himself well today. <laughs> I, I'm following up on one thing, Commissioner Guider, but this was not my original question, so I've actually got two. So the co-located co personal property won't be subject to an inventory that will be provided April 15th of every year to both the county, y'all, and everybody else, meaning other people's own equipment is not part of this transaction. Correct. That's what you're saying would be subject to 100% tax on personal property as opposed to T5's own personal equipment that's owned and on, on site. Correct. I just want to say that for the benefit of Benny Waldrop this year so it's clear and if Benny needs any clarifications, Joe, can you yeah. before tomorrow's committee make sure they get follow that? The, the question I the question I really had was this. T five was part of a former abatement on property they sold. That abatement was not transferred, is that correct? Correct. So we can put language in this one nullifying the I'll former abatement. The resolution and get it to the committee. Okay. If we can just put that in so there's not two abatements right. going on on one yeah. property sorry been transferred. Yeah, I've already made the note on Okay. And Benny, if you'll note that, they had a prior abatement right. and make sure Sherry knows so we can track that if you don't mind. And I mind you, that abatement never went into action. It only The plans only go into action once the company receives 
certificate of occupancy. So it basically um, was just an approved plan awaiting for them to have a CO. So baseline zero then, Joe, is not the current year or next year, but if the gentleman that spoke, if they get online 21 or 22, that would be baseline for a certificate of occupancy. And that starts at zero. <coughs> so they're paying regular taxes on unimproved property right now. Is that right? Yes. Partially built. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Mitchell, I believe you yeah. have something and then we're going to move on. Yes. Yes. And that's what I was going to allude to. Where was the timing of this? So actually, it doesn't start until it actually kicks in, whatever year that <coughs> is. And that's when it actually will kick in. So uh, are the school taxes deferred on this as well? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, so we got the time really right, and I, I know we've created a committee that, that kind of takes a look at all this. Did you guys, by chance, run that through the committee? It's on the agenda for tomorrow. Start tomorrow. Okay, that starts start tomorrow. But we did go ahead and send the actual tax incentive plan, the proposed tax incentive plan to David Corbin and have him look at it with municipal advisors. Okay, 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 good. I just want to make sure that since we created this, that we kind of, you know, use it and, and kind of take that, that kind of route, that, that kind of route better. Uh, outside of that, you, you asked my question about, I was more concerned with when the dates and timing of this, because I, I'm like, yeah, they want to see two, because it, it, my first thought was there would be an abatement for uh, T5 and then an abatement for the, the other end user that comes on board, so, but that's not the case. And it will be well spelled out, I guess, with, and we'll take a look at that with legal, I guess, right? There, there is a provision in here I probably need to address, uh, Commissioner Mitchell, and that is this. And Joe, uh, there's a, uh, there is a provision for transfer, but the transferee would have to take the project exactly as if T5 were to transact this with Switch or anybody else. Yeah. So, not that they would, but I'm just giving it as an example. Uh -huh. they, they would get the abatement provided they agreed to comply with the terms. And it, they pick it up in the year it's picked right, up. Right, whatever, right, exactly. Uh, but Joe, I think probably we need to clarify for purposes of the committee on that sentence structure. It, it, that may run some gray area as to stuff, you know, what part are they conveying? Let's say that some of T5's personal property becomes part of somebody else's personal property. I don't think we're trying to create a stream of, of personal property exemptions we're only creating a string of exemption for T5 and a whole subsidiary or a whole secondary consumer that takes over the project as is. You follow where I'm, where yes, I'm going with that? Yes, yes. I think that part needs clarifying in the agreement. I'll do that. My basic understanding is that the electrical infrastructure will be owned by T5 and people will plug into that. Right. That will be forever T5. That's what's being abated. That is the real estate. The guys who plug into those outlets have to pay taxes on their equipment that goes in there. Did I cover that correctly? Yeah, that's right. I mean, our, our personal property will consist of, uh, you know, some mechanical and electrical equipment that cools and powers the facility, and then, uh, you know, of course, our desks and chairs and things mm -hmm. like that. The, uh, the tenant is going to bring their racks that hold the servers and that's really where all the, the money is I and mean, there's there's a lot of personal property yeah. there I, I think what i'm alluding to is that, that towards the end it says in the event the project should be transferred to a later successor entity blah 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 we're talking about wholly transferred as opposed to in parts so because then, you, do you follow me chris so if, I, if i get to step in here so oftentimes what happens especially on some of these buildings um, that are owned by a developer, unlike T5, they will look to sell that asset mm -hmm. to another user. Well, the transfer basically is to the extent of the original agreement. So if they transfer, if they sell the property in year five of the 10 year plan, and they have to still maintain the jobs, maintain the average wage, maintain the investment. And so mm -hmm. we're transferring that right but it, it concludes at the end of 10 years. Yeah. And so we, we, and we typically, we do those you know, quite often during a period, especially on the typical industrial developer control property. Yeah, Chris, I think we're fine with that. I think what I'm alluding to is where there's only a parcel transfer of the property so that they can create other threads of abatement. We're talking about a project that's wholly transferred to a third party 
not parceling. That's the difference. Do you follow me? That's the difference I'm talking about. It may be on defined project a little more right. broadly, so it nails down exactly what part. Exactly. And I just point out to the commission, mm -hmm. this T5 agreement, because they were in the threshold whenever, you know, they've been in the bucket for a while, mm -hmm. uh, along with switch, the callback is the year in question. It doesn't revert back to the beginning of time because y'all have not made that plan change. I don't know what the committee will do. But in talking with the county administrator, they were already in the bucket of being recruited and obviously have another deal. I just want to make sure it's clear to y'all the callbacks the year in question. Mm -hmm. If there's a non-remedy defect in the abatement, it goes to 100% for the year in question after some procedural safeguards. Mm -hmm. And then once there's a cure, it goes back to being what it is. In other words, this is the old, this is still what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. But they were already in the pipeline, so. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so just in closing, we'll, we'll clearly get that part of it correct, the legal side of it, to make sure that we there's no question about who's being abated or not, and, and kind of what part of the acreage is or isn't, and so on. So we get that we get a clear yeah. understanding of what that is and what the projects are. Sure. So and I, Joe, if you just send me those provisions, I will tell you that we we've, uh, we've had communication with David Corbin, who I think will be at the committee, and David's blessed it too. So that's just our comments, uh, Joe. If you don't mind, we we'll get that fixed. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. I yield back. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you okay, Commissioner? Okay. You yield back. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to tab number six authorization to approve a request by developer of the Fox Hall Resort to permit deviation from the county code requirements and to further notice, uh, modify, I'm sorry, the supplemental develop, uh, development standards for the Fox Hall Resort to allow construction of timber bridges on future public roads within the resort. Uh, Director Valentin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, commissioners, this, this item, uh, as well as the next three items, I'll try to put them in context. Uh, the Fox Hall development, and they have uh, the, the developer has representatives here. I'm sure they'll be able to answer questions and add to the narrative. But they were they were given a zoning approval that contained, uh, in addition to the approval for the area, some special provisions, some special deviations from our county code, and so. Um, at that time, this was probably initially, in, uh, the last time it was uh, approved was in 2012. Initially, it might have been 2007 or uh, before 2010, but 2012, with a, uh, to my understanding, it was the last time that they were approved uh, for any uh, part of that uh, project. Uh, the county code is based, uh, the standards within the county code, code are based on generally national standards that um, most agencies uh, abide by in terms of the design components of, of <coughs> traffic and road design and what have you. And uh, so uh, when they came in, they wanted to build and develop the uh, the uh, project to a different set of standards because, well, it was uh, intended to look different, feel different from other locations as, as a resort. Uh, and so they were given a, a series of special uh, standards to go by. And at the time, it was indicated that any future deviation from the standards either the original standards, obviously, in our code, or the supplemental standards that, they, that were approved would have to come to the board, thus why we are here today. Now, as they began to uh, develop their site plan for the, the application that's been pending uh, before uh, the county, uh, we engage in discussions. We had a series of meetings uh, to discuss what they were proposing and how uh, they were looking to do certain things. And so at one point, there might have been a couple dozen, maybe 30 items that they indicated uh, they wanted uh, deviation from the code for. And so we engaged in discussion about those elements and determined that some of them actually, there was provision within our code 
to, to be able to approve them. Others, there was provision within the supplementary standards that were approved for specifically that project. And so uh, we went back and forth, and there, yet there were others that the code allows some discretion by myself uh, in terms of whether it, it is reasonable to deviate from the existing standards. So we went through that series of requests and narrowed it down to the four elements that are before you today. Uh, one of the reasons uh, that, uh, that they are here is because we got to the point in, in the review that there was neither a provision within our county code nor a provision within the supplementary standards not, nor any other um, leeway uh, within the parameters of the development standards for me to grant them relief unless I could find appropriate justification. These four elements I do not find appropriate justification. Therefore, uh, any relief uh, that would accrue to them would have to come from the board. However, I, I would, um, I would uh, go on to, to say that not only did I fall uh, beyond uh, the comfort level with these four items, I'm into the discomfort level, and I would recommend that the board actually not approve it. Uh, but again, uh, the, uh, the developer is looking for special dispensation from the board. They have every right to ask and uh, for you to consider, and I'm sure uh, some, someone from their group would be uh, happy to expand on that and provide additional input. <coughs> but I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have them for me now, or if you prefer for the developer to come up and yes, speak to the site. I, I just have one comment. It sounds like you're bundling all these four together, so do I need to read them so we can just address them all together, or uh, commissions you want to take I, I, separately? Madam Chair, I, I'm not, I was not intending to bundle them together. Okay. I think they, they should be yeah, we'll taken separate. Yeah, separate, but okay. I wanted to give you context because all of them fall into the same context, that there were provisions and then there were special dispensation and they're seeking more special dispensation. Okay, thank you. Um, Question, Robson, you have comment. Yeah, th thank you, Madam Chair. Now, um, I mean, each one of us have probably a different perspective on this, and Miguel heard you, uh, Director Valentin heard you very loud and clear on your position, which is um, no, no go. Um, and I, I appreciate um, you're clear on that. Sounds like I, I do applaud the administration to being consistent with um, doing business with Douglas, making it easier to do business. Sounds like yeah, I went from 30 down to four issues. These are the uh, I won't necessarily call them showstoppers, but there's something that you, you, you couldn't find. Like in, within your power, like, well, that's all I can do, you know, take it up, peel it up higher. So I respectfully appreciate that. So I'm gonna make my comments. All four of these are just collectively together recognized we can vote on them separately. All right. Um, as it relates to Caps Ferry, the deceleration lane or turning lane, um, I think it's what, 50 feet? It, it needs to be what, 150? Is that accurate? The, the minimum standard is 150 and a 50 yep. foot tape, so total 200. Total 200. Um, um, even though it's temporal, um, I, I think it's, this is cap sir. It's a lot of volume. We cannot back up cap sir. So, you know, the 50 feet or whatever that is, I, I think that would be unacceptable for my vote to have anything. Is there a number that you can come to, though, recognizing whether it's 150, 200, 99, it, it, it's some kind of way to sort of meet them in the middle since it's temporal, because eventually you'll get down to the other one. Um, I don't, I'll lean to you to say what that number is. Just don't back up Caps Ferry. Um, there's no, I mean, that, that, that's my only concern. That's my first one. So if you could come up with the number for that, I'm gonna keep going, just that's my position. Second one is as relates to the, um, uh, the bridge. Um, Again, I don't like wooden structures. I, I appreciate the aesthetics, the Rodeo Drive. I, I appreciate that the, the, you can do the aesthetics on top, but the infrastructure itself needs to be whatever it needs to be, solid steel, whatever. 
I won't compromise on that for my vote. It must, you, you gotta meet me halfway. No solid wooden must be, put your aesthetics on top, but at the bottom, uh, it, it needs to uh, meet standard, but I'm, that's just me, the second one. As it relates to parking, um, 90 degrees, I mean, I hate 78 backing up on that when I used to drive, but I can imagine people, I don't like that. I, I would be okay with a 45 degree angle backing up, um, uh, not 90, um, but, but duly noted. You mentioned something about right away, uh, they give you a little room, I'm going to lean to you to sort of find that place of compromise if it can be found. It gives you a little bit more room for visibility. Um, but again, I respect my peers where they take that. Uh, and then you have one more, fourth one, which is the driveway standards. The use of, um, of uh, a reduced standard for design purposes for the internal roads. Yeah, um, which is what, going from private to public or? Uh, well, that's undefined at this point, but, but the, the indication that at least the last time that uh, we discussed the matter, uh, they're looking for all roads to be taken over by the county, so it would apply to public roads essentially because that's all there would be, so unless, unless that's been defined differently uh, since our last discussion. But um, yeah, it would apply to Public yeah, Alright, so, well, uh, on that one, this is, uh, I, I know it's a resort, it's supposed to have a little bit different feel, we're taking over it as a public, but I, I think on that one, I'm, I'm, I just, I was more definitive on the, the other three, I'll yield to Madam Guy and how she may see that particular element, um, <coughs> I'm good, I yield back, that's okay. my position. Okay, thank you, um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Ms. Guy, do you have a comment regarding this? Um, Miguel, as far as, um, the turn lane, uh, the acceleration lane, I guess, uh, on Caps Ferry. What's the speed limit on Caps Ferry? Speed limit is 55. Okay, so people drive about 65, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very dark through there, too. Uh, and if you're talking about large buses turning into uh, this temporary driveway, you could cause some kind of a uh, danger for people coming down the road uh, at that speed, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little problem, I have a problem with that, but I'm not saying it has to be 200 feet, but I'm gonna leave that discretion up to you because that's your expertise. Uh, but uh, I, I'm thinking more like a, a hun at least 100, if not a, a little bit more than that, if you count the taper. As far as the wooden bridge, we, we don't build wind bridges uh, in Douglas County anymore. I think at one time we may have, but, um, but incorporating all of uh, those streets into the county uh, for the maintenance and operation of it, you know, this is private property. This, this is, uh, we, and for 30 years, we're really not gonna get that much money from it other than a little sales tax maybe, but, uh, because uh, we've given them a 30-year abatement. So um, to, for us to take on streets that wind around, and they're, these streets are like 22, in, 22 feet wide. They're very narrow, <coughs> so they don't meet our uh, standard to begin with. But um, on the uh, intersections, if there was, a, within the resort, if there was a, if we deviated from our code or standards and there was a wreck, uh, then I believe the resort would be the first people to come to us and say, hey, you've got to do something about this intersection if we took it in. So uh, I would have problems with that. And as far as parking, maybe they could do a one-way street and park it uh, 45 degrees uh, and that would eliminate them back and into each other on a 22-foot road. But um, the, this is just too much to ask the county to uh, take on this responsibility when it is private property. All of this is private property. Of course, we took in the subdivision. That's different because those are citizens of the county and, and uh, they, you know, they live here and they uh, contribute to the county and everything, but this is private property and I, I just do not 
see why we would consider this. Uh, I think it would come back on us if there was any deaths incurred because we deviated <coughs> from our own standards. And so um, this is uh, just too much to ask. And I yield back. Okay, thank you so much. Um, other commissioners, or Commissioner Coffin, you have a comment or anything? I do. Um, thank you for coming to us and letting us know what, what uh, Fox Hall has requested. However, I agree with uh, Commissioner Guider. The safety considerations are really, really big. We, we have a standard for a reason. We ask people to follow those standards. If we were doing construction ourselves, we would follow those standards. So we expect for others to do that as well. From what I've heard and read from following up on the Fox Hall project, we have conceded a lot so that they can do what they need to do in order to put the resort in. And we're glad they're here in Douglas County, but we have to keep a minimum standard. So I agree, we don't need to allow them to, um, to do these really extra things. It's, it's, it's not necessary. We have to set the standard. We have to keep the standard. Uh, and as far as us taking on the private roads, um, we would be the ones who would have to upkeep those. That's not fair for us. That's not fair for our taxpayers. I say no. Our position is, is a definite no. But thank you for bringing it to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Ms. Commissioner um, Mitchell, you, you, have, you have a comment? Okay. Uh, Madam Chair. <coughs> yes, I, I, I was going to ask you. Yeah, Ms. Parker had the Lake Hill meeting downtown. And Harrison Merrill Jr. is here. He's got some insight as to basis for some of these requests. They seem sort of crazy when you hear some of the comments made so far. But he can come in on the speeds on these roads, the agreement to maintain the roads that would be public inside. May he speak for just a minute? Yes, you may. Mm -hmm. Come on. I was going to, I'm going to ask you to come up and speak to me. Well, you got that. Yeah. Thank you so much. <coughs> Harrison. Thank you. No. Thank you, Commissioners, and thank you, Miguel and Mr. Teal, for working with us on the other items to um, from the standards to make sure we keep that resort feel. Uh, and the fire department, thank you all for working with us closely and uh, the architects to uh, come up with a plan where we don't sacrifice safety at all. We use all the codes, all the recommendations, but I know um, several of your staff actually came up with the creative ideas to keep the look and feel that we're looking for. So. Uh, appreciate everyone's help and time in these matters. These four items um, are the ones left over, and let me give a little context to each one of them. Um, understand um, everything that was said, but from, from our perspective as well. The first one, which is the timber bridges, um, that is an aesthetic thing, trying to keep the look and the feel of the resort. The timber bridges we're looking for are not the standard timber bridges. They're ones that have been done in the state of Georgia, several different places for public roads. They have the HS44 uh, standard. I won't even pretend to know what that means, but I know that's the uh, highway standard for weight. Um, and I know, Miguel, we've talked about several. Uh, one of the biggest issues is making sure it can carry a full, fully loaded fire truck. Um, but it has in Kennesaw uh, and Marietta, there's actually one in Serenby, there's one on the Foxhole property, which is a, a private bridge right now. Um, but several areas, I've got a study from York Bridge with that information that I'd love to share with, with any of y'all to look through. Uh, number two, which is the uh, turn lanes inside the property. This is one that we've had a full traffic study. We've actually had uh, Hughes Ray, uh, our local engineer look at it as well as Kim Lee Horn who's done a traffic study for us for the whole phase one which is the full build out for over the next 10 years. So all the numbers they're looking at are not today or 10 years from now as far as the traffic counts coming in from Caps Ferry, coming into the hotel, coming into the villas in the various areas. Their recommendation on it is if there's more than 200 cars coming to any turn that they recommend that a, um, a turn lane may be warranted if there's 300. It's required, I believe, under DO, uh, Georgia DOT law. All of ours, other than the turn lane into the West End, are far under that. One of them is an overflow parking lot with 55 spaces. Um, they're predicting about 110 people turning in uh, each time, which over if you take 
take 15 hours from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., which are the prime times for someone turning in. That's about one car every 10 minutes turning in there. What we're trying to prevent as we lead up to it is, again, that look in the feel, but also where we have the roads internally, which are anywhere going to be from 20 to 25 miles per hour because we are going to have a lot of pedestrians. It's a resort, so we want to keep that traffic slow. Um, but going up through there, again, wanting to keep the look and feel throughout that. Number three, which is the Caps Ferry uh, decel lane, we totally understand the, the issue there is we have two options. Uh, the one option is keeping the, um, the entrance currently there, which we would have to have for guests as well as construction traffic. There are no uh, decel lanes, there's no turn lanes. The new road that we're building will have both of those. Um, that'll be built um, in advance of the West End and the completion of the villas. But that's why the reason the request for the 50 feet is that's the most distance, 50 to 60 feet, we can get before it affects the infrastructure uh, under Caps Ferry. There's a uh, tunnel right now, I think it's both for the flood, but also it's a golf cart tunnel across the road. So all of that would have to be ripped out uh, leading up to the bridge. That is the reason for that request, because if not, we've got to stick with the, the current uh, entrance and we'll have to use it for both construction and gas traffic, which don't have any, any turn lanes. Um, and then number four, the angled parking, that's in the villa area. The request for 90 degrees is because the buildings are on the lake, so you don't have any space for parking unless it's uh, further away at the uh, clubhouse or other parking locations. That road, again, will have about 200 people turning in both ways throughout the day. The first 120 villas are all before that piece, so really the rest of that road is a very secondary road um, with about 60 cars coming uh, through it. And that's 10 years from now because it connects to the residential. There's a private residential gate. So it's at the end there, but it's a way to build those. But again, respect any decisions that you all made. Just wanted to kind of put it in context from our perspective on these last four items and why the, uh, why the request was made. So appreciate, uh, appreciate your time. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Vice Chairman? Yeah, I mean, and, I, and, I, and I do get it. And I, <laughs> you know, we're trying to balance um, our Department of Transportation's director, who's obviously the county administrator, who sort of work with you guys. And, um, you know, at, at some point, what this is a private play. We, we don't really want to get into the resort business. I think we've always been clear, at least my, my time here, on what is our role. You have to be very careful that we as a commission don't get pulled over to a place of maintaining something. We'll, we, we'll, we'll enable you, we'll empower you, we'll, we'll, we want to incent you in all that we can, but um, I, I'm just, I, I just, some of this is that, it's the cost of doing business. Uh, we, we really, I, I hear you um, in, in some of the requests, uh, but I, I'm gonna lean to Director of Transportation, we're gonna lean to a home rule as it relates to, but it's not could we do it, it's should we do it. And I'm, I'm just not, I think to your point, we've knocked it down from 30 down to four. I, I think that if you can work within the things that we've given, I mean, you sort of see what our leaning is right now going into tomorrow's vote. Um, County Administrator and, 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 and Director, y'all y'all work this out and see if y'all can come up with something um, that, that will be before us and, uh, and we'll vote each one of these up or down um, um, and as is or unless y'all come up with a concession. But I, I think I don't want you to take away that we're, we're not in support. It's just that at some point we have to take a position that says, okay, how much is enough? Uh, it's not that we're, we, I mean, I love the Fox Hall project. I love the, 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 the what it brings. Uh, but, but some of this is like, ah, but that's, I don't want to get into road maintenance. I mean, that's, that, that, that's a lot uh, for us to sort of get into that. Now, if you're talking about infrastructure, regional infrastructure, something to that expect that the benefits the whole really got my attention. But it, to, to take on responsibility inside of private, I'm going to lean with Madam Guider. I, I just want to clarify that position, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Guider. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Harrison, um, you mentioned a tunnel, a uh, golf tunnel that goes mm -hmm. under Caps Ferry. Is that existing today? Yes, ma'am. And how far from this temporary drive is it? It's probably about 
hundred feet, I would guess, but it, the grade starts changing at about that fifty to sixty feet with the guardrails and sloping down. Yeah. Uh, do you have a like a culvert right there when you come off the road already? Is it already in place in this temporary gate? There, right now, it's about um, it's a little pan that's a turnoff for what we've used for events. It, it also was used for the equestrian piece early on, so there's a couple big gates there with the little pan, but there's no turnoff there currently. I know that, but I mean, is there a culvert under, uh, when you come off the road into your property, mm -hmm. is there a culvert there? Is it galvanized steel, or is it concrete, or what? There is no culvert at that location. The, no cul culvert. the culvert for the floodway is where the golf cart tunnel is, and that's what takes the water um, under the road there. Well, um, I, I see your problem with with the um, the tunnel, the existing tunnel, and uh, but I don't know what else. Fifty feet is way under standard. <laughs> So, um, may, unless y'all can work it out, I, I still have to go to his recommendation, but I yield back. And, and one of the other pieces, as mentioned, is the private, um, we've agreed to maintain, in, under the IGA, all the roads are required to be public roads uh, under the intergovernmental agreement. So we've agreed anything that's outside of the standards, bridges <coughs> and stuff like that, uh, we're happy to have a uh, private maintenance agreement that we would maintain all those pieces uh, as Miguel said it's not something the county's used to and the standards and don't want to maintain anything that's not a standard so we're happy to take on as much of that as y'all would like for us to maintain uh, through a private uh, easement agreement or maintenance but, agreement. But all the roads out there are what's the widest? Well, no, 24 feet without the without so that the, doesn't uh, meet our standard to begin with for a road <coughs> So, uh, but anyway, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to keep it moving, but I just wanted to uh, uh, thank you all. For, thank you particularly, uh, Mr. Merrill, for coming in. And the Board of Commissioners will take a look at it, and we'll go in our individual corners and make a decision. If you could, uh, Director Valentin, if, uh, for me, if you could look at uh, number six and, and uh, evaluate that HS44, those standards that he mentioned, Sarah B and Marion uh, Bridges. Have you have you checked on that? Just if you could just take a look at that uh, book for me, or should I say the uh, codes on that HS44 standards? So you you, want, you have a response? Look like you well, can say something. Well, there's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple components. Uh, we, uh, in our attempt to reach a compromise, something that that can work for for them. Uh, what we've offered is for them to have a standard construction bridge below, and then put a cap aesthetically out of timber that gives them the look that they're looking for and it's a standard bridge for our purposes okay. uh, that's that's where I would lean to uh, beyond that uh, it, it would be beyond my expertise I'm not a structural engineer and uh, frankly I think that the county would be uh, absorbing uh, the responsibility that is uh, beyond uh, what you're typically uh, used to have you consulted with a construction engineer? I know you said about construction. Have you just asked, you know, sometimes we can leave our expertise and ask other questions, maybe from another discipline, which is that construction engineer. Have you contacted one to chat with them? Or? We, no, uh, unfortunately, we do not have any structural engineers it's on structural. call. Okay, structural engineers, okay. I'm okay. Gonna take this off of the agenda and send it to Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We're, we're going to move right along. I believe we will be able to. We've already covered um, tab number six, seven, and eight, and nine. Mm -hmm. So we'll move to tab number ten: authorization to approve an equitable sharing agreement and certification, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Laura Thompson. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. How are y'all? Good morning. This is our annual report. We have to report to the Department of Justice for Washington. It just shows what our expenditures and our revenues are and I have to have your signature to send it in. All right, any questions from the board? Yes. Sounds good, we'll move to the next one, Ms. Thompson. Uh, tab number 11, authorization to accept a victim of crime act competitive grant 
for Criminal Justice Coordinating Council and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents <coughs> and amend the budget. <coughs> Ms. Thompson? We were, um, we received an email saying that um, the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council had ad additional funds that we can apply for, and we did for training purposes. We're going to try to get some of the victim advocates specialized training, and they gave us $3,800. Um, it would be a $760 match, but we'll try to cover most of that with volunteer hours. Thank you so much. Any questions for the board? All right. Thank, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Tab number 12, authorization to approve a claim for a property <coughs> tax credit as recommended by the Board of Assessors and Tax Commissioner, Director Walder. Walder. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very simple. Uh, parcel 173-155 uh, was combined with another parcel for 2018 so that the value and everything was taxed properly with the combined parcel but we neglected to uh, void out that parcel so it got double tax so <coughs> we're asking this credit to be approved for 2018 for this parcel okay um, any questions from the board okay all right well thank you so much um thank you very much thank you <laughs> Tab number 13, authorization to apply for and accept grants in the amount of $6,051.03 from the Georgia Trauma Commission EMS Trauma Related Equipment Grant and amend the fire department's budget. Um, Chief Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is an annual grant that we apply for. Uh, it helps us uh, fund some of the trauma related equipment that we need. Uh, this year we'll be buying Easy IO drivers. That's where we drill into the bone to start a IV basically, okay. uh, our training mannequins, and then infrared thermometers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from the board? It's not as bad as it seems, really. Yeah, you see okay. the things in there. Bad information. For yeah. sure. Well, I had a flashback from working in several so We're not conscious when we do that. <laughs> All right, Chief. Thank you so much. We'll move to tab number 14, authorization to approve a contract with Terminus to serve as municipal advisors for the Douglas County, for Douglas County and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Holman. Yes, um, this is just asking for approval to uh, renew the retainer contract with Terminus at $4,000 a month. This is the same contract as they had last year. Um, we did find that this is cheaper um, than getting them to do things on a project or project basis. Um, and just, it is on the finance committee uh, agenda for the afternoon <coughs> as well, but we're going to go ahead and get it on this morning. Okay. Any questions for the board of comments, um, Vice Chairman Robinson? Yeah, just 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 to clarify, just with um, this this is a retainer uh, for ongoing advisement for us, but uh, separate and clear from anything that's, that's deal specific. Um, uh, we use terminus for um, we went to Wall Street. Um, anything dealing with you know major bond deals, maybe some type of. Um, Public-private partnership. I see that separate from this advisement. So I just want, for the record, uh, that this is, if, if in fact we had to use them separately, there would be an amendment to this amendment, no different than more or less something like that. So. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Any questions from Ken, the board? The, you heard that? Yeah, and, uh, definitely. Okay. They wouldn't work for that on those kind of specialty <laughs> projects. Above they would, they would become their their liability costs would be exceeding <laughs> what you'd be paying them. So. Okay. Commissioner Geiger. Uh, but it's my understanding that Terminus will be sitting on the abatement committee to yes. um, guide us along mm -hmm. too. Okay, absolutely. So we're here this morning. Okay. I move on to the next item, which will be, uh, which is tab number 15, authorize, uh, authorize the execution of the engagement letters with Malden and Jenkins for the performance of an external audit and financial statement preparation for 2018 in the amount of $65,000 and for the amount of $65,000 and landfill financial assurance $2,150 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents to Rector Holman again. Yes, this is just the annual engagement letters we have with Mona and Jenkins here are our auditors. Uh, this allows them to begin um, doing what they need to do to um, complete our FY18 um, audit. Okay, any questions for the board or comments? Um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Right, and so this is our standard annual big audit that mm -hmm. we normally do. 
Uh, and this is run by, you know, obviously I'm the finance county administrator. You guys are handling this. Any event that the board of commissioners had a specific area in which we had interest in, is this the time to sort of offer that up? It says, hey, I'd like this to be focused on. How does that work? I know they got their standard, and that's mm -hmm. what we're paying for. Mm -hmm. But but is there a like, okay, can you just, I don't mean, without making a deep dive forensic, and that's not what I'm asking for, but if there's something specific that we had questions about, can we offer it up during this time period? I don't have anything in mind. I'm just saying it for the record. Absolutely. Um, I believe also when they come on site, um, they I don't know if they visit all of you, but I know they pay a visit to Madam Chair, um, County Administrator, and ask if there's any concerns or questions. Again, not from a forensic, but just, you know, is there is there anything okay? Is there anything that we need to be aware of? Mm -hmm. um, so it would be at that time as well. Okay. I'm just making a note out. I yield out there. Thank okay. You. Any other questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> See, I have some. <laughs> <laughs> Tab number 16, authorization to receive partial payment in the amount of $250,000 in future uh, payments from Travelers Hartford Insurance Company for equipment, vehicle uh, contents and building repairs, losses and other re and or replacements stemming from the fire which occurred at the Douglas County Department of Transportation Warehouse at 8249 Chicago Chicago Avenue on January 22nd, uh, 2019, and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Uh, I believe I've been administered, I don't see. Yeah, Matt's teaching class this morning. Okay. Essentially, this is just to get us started. Um, the in Travelers and Matt, um, they've got their structural engineers on site. They're looking at the building. We've got um, Caterpillar and Yancey and some other places looking at some of the equipment to determine exactly what the cost is. Um, this $250,000 is just startup money just to, just so that if we've got anything that comes up before it's fully settled, um, this is just to help out. Okay, any questions? And we think the final, the final payout will be a lot more than $250,000. Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson, and yeah. first. And yeah, I, 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 and I'm, which district did this fall in? Four? One? Four. One. one. Is it one? One. Is it one? This one. I, and so I'm, I'm sensing my comments. What, what is the intent of this building? I mean, every now and then, I mean, we, we might have had uh, no intentional use of the building other than what it was used for historically. But, but does this give us a reason to pause and really think about how we use this asset? Um, are you going to repurpose it? Um, have y'all gotten to that place as an administration on what you really want to do with this? Um, do we? And, and I'm going to pause there. I'm, I'm just curious. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, so I'll yield. Well, it is. It's, it was currently being used. Well, it was being used by Douglas County DOT maintenance. Mm -hmm. And from discussions with Miguel and Lebon, we'd like to keep it that way um, going forward. But. There will be renovations that will have to be done because of the, because of the fire. Mm -hmm. And we had several folks in offices there. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, I'm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Matt, I've been involved in a number of fires over the years with carriers, and while I appreciate the 250000 as an advance, yeah. I, I think Matt or somebody probably needs to secure our own independent consultant with respect to this claim as far as the loss if it's a building loss mm -hmm. because at some point in time we'd be relying on the experts from the insurance company we may disagree now we may have we've already done that okay we've yeah. already done. just want to make sure because <coughs> they're being nice now later is when you get nickel and dime and somebody once told me you make all your money in the last hour so if we got somebody that's uh yes. if we got somebody on our side then that's good Yes, we did. I did look at the check, and it does say advance on it. I don't see any risk unless there's something that Matt's being asked to sign. And I would say before he signs anything, I'd like to see anything that he signs. But the check itself does say advance on it. Okay. You know, I'm sorry, Commissioner Baker. Yes, uh, I was just going to ask, uh, I guess I can address this to Mark, what equipment was, uh, main equipment, some of the splash equipment, that's paver, uh, lawn mowers. Uh, we had two. A roller. Uh, yeah, we had a roller. We had two salt spreaders. <coughs> Duck trucks with salt spreaders on the back. Um, 
I didn't know there was that much storage place out there, I guess. Yeah, it's about 15,000 square feet. Well, about 10 of it was. So are we going to keep our equipment down there uh, like this, or are we bringing yeah, it up here to the fleet area? No, it, it, this is Douglas County DOT equipment, so it would stay with Douglas County DOT. All of it's going to. Uh, so we're looking at rebuilding maybe a shelter for some of this equipment. <coughs> Yeah, well, look at depending on the, the building, depending on what comes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I I wasn't sure exactly what all was destroyed in the fire. Uh, well, so nothing was totally destroyed. Um, but damage to yes, damage, and we're trying to find. We're determining in the process of determining the extent of the damage. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. I get that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll move on to the next. Okay. Yeah, just thank you. Just real quick, but is the 250 replacing the equipment or is it just a building? I mean, because you think about it, we put a new car in this old building, you know, put your bike in it and it, it burned, right? And so I guess this new equipment that was flossed, it's being replaced as whole, new equipment. I mean, we ain't been in this floss that long and I, I don't want that to be just sort of dismissed. Is the replace is the equipment coming back whole? And then that's separate than replacing the building, or is that 250 for the building and the equipment? How does it work? Well, right now, this is just an advance. It hadn't been determined exactly what the damage is and the cost for all the equipment, each piece of equipment and the building. <coughs> that's still in the process. All right, see, that's my concern is that I don't, I'm, let's, let's, as a commission, let's be careful what we commit to. That building is, no, it's the equipment. The people pay for that sploss. Right, I mean, I, I think some responsibility is on us as in, on the administration for the maintenance of that building, right? And you had a loss. Okay, well, is that a priority above and beyond the equipment that's supposed to be repaving these roads and so forth? So if I had to set a priority, the priority for the money should be the equipment that's brand new versus a building that we, you know, is like, why y'all didn't take care of that? I want to be careful with this. I'm, I'm, and it's okay. I don't want y'all to respond. I just want to make sure I, I want to know what I'm hearing because I'm hearing. I don't want to commit to something that, like, in, in, in this equipment that the people pay for brand new, just sort of get dismissed. But the fact that, okay, we got to put this building back together. And y'all don't have all the answers yet. You don't have all the facts yet. So I mean, <coughs> don't, let, let's wait until you get the numbers back. Uh, I, I don't want to be led down the path. We got this advance, and, it's, and it, it leans us toward, okay, we got to put this building back. It's like, well, park that thing over there in that new building, like a used car salesman, roll that stuff out at night when there's nothing. I mean, Let's be careful, but I don't want the people, who, the public pay for brand new stuff that got damaged. Let's replace that first. And then whatever's left over, then y'all can you know, work toward you know, restoring that building, because you do have a brand new building that we just built. Thank you. And we are in, we're in the process of getting the equipment repaired uh, <laughs> as we speak. So That's the building will come later. So that can have pay mm -hmm. So do that. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to tab number 17, authorization to accept change order number four for the Motorola Incorporation with a net uh, impact of $8,100 reduction in the available credit due to the Douglas County, um, due to Douglas County and authorized chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, through the process of uh, building uh, and planning and building the, the new radio system, uh, throughout the process, we've accumulated over $104,000 worth of credit with Motorola. Uh, this change order has two components. The first component is a savings of $14,100 for the county agreeing to use open racks instead of closed cabinets. So we're saving $14,100 by making that, by agreeing to that. We're also, um, we've uh, expensed $22,200 to remove a trash pit that was found over at fire station number five. That fire pit was, um, uh, was uh, started back when the building, fire station five was built, and it caused uh, the ground to not be suitable for the, the uh, structure, the concrete pad for the tower. So all of that had to be, all of the debris and a lot of the dirt had to be removed. It was quite extensive, uh, and we, the, um, uh, the uh, Motorola even brought in some geotech engineers to look at the site, 
determine how much of the of the bad material had to be taken out to uh, make it suitable for the tower, and that was at $22,200. So the net impact to our existing credit, uh, if you take the $14,100 on the plus side and the $22,200 on the negative side, you're left with a negative impact of $8,100. So if you deduct that from our existing credit of $104,000, we're left with an existing credit of $96,435.60. Okay. All right. Very well said. Um, any questions from the board? Did a good job. Thank you. We'll move on to the last one, tab number 18. Um, approval of an annual agreement with SR Law Group as juvenile conflict attorneys. Authorization to terminate the current agreements with Olivia Smith and Nicola Robinson and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Attorney Bernard. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to take okay. that one too. So we had, current, we had previous contracts with Olivia Smith and Nicola Robinson. Um, and these were the Chins attorneys. Mm -hmm. They established their own business called the SR Law Group. So we need to, we need to get rid of those personal contracts, have one contract with SR Law Group for those two employees, um, so it'll be the exact same amount of money, but instead of two contracts, it'll be one contract. And we have to switch this for tax purposes. Okay, okay. Any questions from yes. the board? Um, Vice Chairman Roberts. Yeah, is this a professional <coughs> services? Uh, you know, can help clarify the contract component. Is these professional services like your firm, or is this something separate like these are employees that are under conflict? What am I looking at? Well, here? most of, most of them in the juvenile conflict attorneys or whatever, most of them are individuals, but when they work for a firm, they're providing, I think, their federal ID number. So really, it's more an accounting move than it is a, a legal move. In other words, there's still other people. Yep. But for accounting, the agreement for juvenile court services is being provided through a, a business entity that's got multiple players as opposed to an individual and their social security numbers. Is that right? That's correct. When they fill out their W-9 yep. to do business with Douglas County yep. before it was their individual names and I'm sure probably with their social, social security, security number okay. when they wanted to change that to SR <coughs> law group then it became a business with a federal ID number okay I'm fine okay. you two are fine I'm fine okay mm -hmm. fine. okay so this one so will this will they stay on the same contract uh, uh, annual contract dates and time it won't be able to yeah, take the, the, I don't have it pulled up in there. is this let me see the term real quick in here I'm going to do it Okay. We will make sure what y'all are approving is through December 31st. Right, right. So you're going to say it lines up. Yes. yes. Yeah, it does say the contract should be effective oh. February 19th, tomorrow, and shall expire on December 31st, <coughs> 2019. And it'll come back around. And probably we need to make sure it's termination language about the other ones, or unless we have a resignation in place. Okay. We'll take care of it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least is tab number 19, authorization to create a new part-time chaplain position to serve the jail for the sheriff's office. Um, Major Holmes. This is a position that the sheriff uh, is asked to include. Uh, there is money in the budget for this to happen, so there shouldn't be any issue on it. Okay. Any questions for the board? Okay. Chaplains. Chaplains. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you. We. Uh, Board of Commissioners, if you would take a uh, take a look at the approval of the expenses uh, for tomorrow, so we can approve accordingly. And then uh, we have a discussion item, but we will uh, discuss that at if once I call and ask the attorney, do we need to go into executive session? You do, Madam Chair, for legal, real estate, and personnel. Okay. Do we have a motion, Board of Commissioners? Do we have a motion to go into executive session? So, so second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay. All right, please take 10 minutes and come back. Uh, and we will resume our meeting. Board of Commissioners, we are back um, on air. So any questions or concerns at this point? No, ma'am. All right. With that being said, this meeting is adjourned.